I have in the studio today um, Christopher Murphy, who is the assistant director of the Fort Wayne Youth Theater. What's up, Christopher? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Wait a minute. Maybe I should turn that on and I can Whoop. hear you. Oh, there, you there go. I there am. There you are. I'm live now. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> and I have um, Todd Espeland. Yes. And Todd is the, the um, g give us your title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the incoming uh, executive artistic director of the youth. Ah, there we are. <laughs> I'm the incoming uh, executive artistic director of the Fort Wayne Youth Theater. And um, uh, I just want to say, uh, since I can, I'm incredibly grateful to Leslie Horman, who is uh, exiting. Um, and uh, so thank you, Leslie, and thank you, board. It's an honor to, to serve this organization. Right. And, and we yeah. are thrilled to have him. Awesome. Yeah, Thank because you. when I um, actually initially talked about the interview, it was with Leslie, mm -hmm. Leslie, and I wasn't aware there was a transition going on. So welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. I want to jump right into this, and then we're going to go back to talk about um, you guys individually, okay? Sure. But why we're here today is because there is a um, an event taking place on May 19th. Do you guys want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, sure. We have our uh, Fairy Tale Fest. Our fifth annual Fairy Tale Fest is on the 19th. We actually have a production of Pinocchio that I am directing that opens on the 18th uh, and then also performs as part of the Fairy Tale Fest on the 19th. It's a, a big, great day for the entire family at the Arts United campus. Uh, we've got performances of Pinocchio, uh, an original show that Leslie Horman has written that's going to be performed in the Our Center Black Box Theater uh, called A Grim Mother tale. And then we also have performances of Crumpet the Trumpet from the uh, Fort Wayne Dance Collective and Rapunzel from the Fort Wayne Ballet, plus bouncy castles and food trucks and just all sorts of amazing things. It's going to be a great day. And yeah. so that's from 10... Uh-oh. It's actually from 10 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Correct. And mm -hmm. what's the location? The Arts United Center campus at 303 East Main Street. East Main Street. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a okay. great time for the entire family. It's going to be a great event all day coming out. Uh, and it's uh, four, four shows for one mm -hmm. price. Yeah. Right. Plus yeah. all the other events that we have going on. That's awesome. And, you know, it's still, I, I asked about where it's located because there are still people <laughs> in <laughs> Fort Wayne who are not aware that there's a youth, a fabulous youth theater yeah. here. So can you give us your contact number? And also, I was going to talk ab about that brochure, but the bu brochure is 12 pages <laughs> long. <laughs> and it is fabulous. Just right. a bunch of stuff on there, guys. So I... I I like for you to talk about that, but okay, I'm excited about this interview. So <laughs> Lot, I'm gonna lots back, going back on at the up. Fort Wayne University. I'm gonna back up. Season, uh, lots of classes and <laughs> camps. Yeah. Yes, yes. I want to talk about you guys individually. So, Christopher, tell me about Christopher Merck. Tell. Wow, that's an open-ended <laughs> question right there. Uh, Instead of me reading it, I want to hear about it. <laughs> uh, Christopher Murphy is uh, a director, uh, an acting teacher, an actor. Uh, I've spent most of my life in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I was actually the theater director at Blackhawk Middle School here in Fort Wayne for 20 some years. Okay. And uh, in addition, have always been very active with Fort Wayne Youth Theater and a lot of the other theaters in town. And a couple of years ago, I was very, very fortunate that my current position at the Fort Wayne Youth Theater opened up and I was able to join this organization that I am so incredibly passionate about on a full-time basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. still get to work with kids. Absolutely. That's you know, a we cool were thing. we we were actually just talking today. I was talking to <laughs> Leslie, and we were setting up our dress-up station for uh, the the fairy tale fest. And she said, "You know, how cool is it? You know, here we are. We are we're adults. We're in our forties and fifties, and we're we're making dress-up stations. I know, right? <laughs> and and I just think that's great that at my age, I, I still get to go to work and play every single day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Todd, how did you manage to to land this position? <laughs> uh, it was it was dumb luck, I think. Um, yeah, I previous to being in Fort Wayne, uh, I was living in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I was the artistic director at the Kalamazoo Civic Theater, which is the third biggest community theater in the country. Okay, uh, uh, manning the artistic end of a sixteen show season. Um, and I ended up in Kalamazoo um, in 2000. 
Um, I am a special. I, 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 my specialty is mask and movement theater. And uh, if you think and um, Julie Taymor's The Lion King, I trained in that kind of uh, doing producing <clears throat> that kind of theatrical work. I ended up in Kalamazoo uh, teaching master classes at the university there, and uh, got brought in for a year sabbatical. And uh, thought it was going to be as a, a nice, it was a nice arts community, and thought it'd be a great place to to tour out of as anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I was looking for just a little bit of a change. And also, my fiance is uh, Kara Wade, who's the head of photography at the University of Saint Francis. So it just sort of all kind of came together. This position opened up. I sought to apply. Um, yeah, I'm not going to Go figure. Yeah, huh? yeah. So it was, it was nice. Wonderful. And it was nice yeah. to, um, it, you know, this is a really old organization. It's the fifth oldest youth theater in America. It has a really active season that branches out in a number of different theatrical um, uh, performances, as well as its emphasis on classes and camps. And what I really appreciate about this organization is how much outreach it does into that's the that's what i was going to talk to you mm -hmm. actually do you um partner with bright point mm -hmm. and talk talk a little bit about that what's the partnership with the bright point and how do you or any organizations that are here yeah we, yeah i just want to officially say uh -huh. christopher is the kid whisperer <laughs> i've <laughs> gone and seen him at a number of bright points this week and i had the best time yeah we, we, we we've we've had fun uh todd's come out to a couple of those bright point locations with me this week uh and we do we do a lot of outreach we visit boys and girls clubs ah. and uh, turnstone and urban league all sorts of uh, outreach within our community trying to reach kids who might not otherwise be touched by the magic of theater right. and and one of those is a residency at all the bright point locations and I am lucky enough to get to go and and it is just it's a it's a thrill Todd I I, I think you know would agree it's just a blast to go and and experience theater and and acting and singing and dancing and all this this fun stuff with these teeny tiny little five-year-old <laughs> kids and and expose them to something that i'm so passionate about and do they want to get on stage with you when you're when you're performing oh I'm absolutely sure. we, we it's all oh, interactive in, oh, yeah we're great. right there they're they're always acting with me we're having a great time that's cool you yeah. know what i think is so cool i've seen um one of the bright point um locations they have uh, they come here mm -hmm. t to the library periodically and have dances. And they just had a dance um, a couple of weeks ago. And it was so funny seeing these little kids <laughs> <It> was like <laughs> dancing. And so, yeah. They're I'm, so I'm uninhibited yes. at that age. Yes. So, you know, if you can capture and harness all of that energy all and that energy. joy. And that freedom. Yes. They, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what we all aspire to as yeah, actors, yeah, yeah. you know, is to let go of our inhibitions and be as free as they are. Yes, yes. So talk to me about what's what's on the brink, what's coming up now, what's um, what's coming up for the... Well, we're moving uh, past Fairytale Fest and Pinocchio. We're going to move into our summer camps. So we've got our Rising Star summer camp. We've got two sessions of that. Uh, June 18th to the 29th, and then July 16th to the 27th. That's grades 3 to through 12. Um, How do the kids apply? Uh, you can call the, the Fort Wayne Youth Theater and apply. Uh, our number... 422 uh, 6900. Okay. I'm learning the ropes here. <laughs> <laughs> Soon I'll know it. <laughs> hey, what is the website um, that, that they can actually go on and look at that awesome brochure? <laughs> It is fortwayneyouththeater.org. It's a very long web address, so if they need to, just Google Youth Theater. Okay. It's it's U Theater with an R E, not oh, an E R. Yeah. So oh, okay. Fort Wayne U Theater. We're looking for people to put the U in okay. Youth Theater. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's nice. Right? You yes. like that? I do like that. Actually, <laughs> secretly, <laughs> when I was talking to the education director at the Kalamazoo Civic, and I told her I got this job, she went and Googled the website and got on there and went, I love that name. Yeah. Right, right. Because she's all about, it's all about the Youth mm -hmm. Theater, and this is really directly. Yeah. It's not the Children's Theater. Right. It's you. And it's, you know, because, yes. frankly, the cool little person that you were when you were little, that has informed the human being you are today. And so I oh, say it, that again. It, it's true. The cool little person mm -hmm. you were when you were little, that's who informed who you are today. The wow. things that you dug when you were when you were young, the things that inspired you, the things that that activated your imagination, they, you, that's come with you into the future. And 
and we forget about that. Um, and so I love that this is very focused on not just youth as in, you know, kids, but as in all of us. I mean, right. my, my, one of my big goals is I want everybody in Fort Wayne eventually to come to see shows at the youth theater, not just because you have friends or family in the show, but mm -hmm. you just, you want to come and experience the work that's happening and it's happening right now. And I want to, I want to double and treble that. Right. So let me just um, ask you this while you're there, then do you do you need volunteers? Mm. <laughs> Always. 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 We uh, are like any other non for profit organization. We rely very heavily on our volunteer base. We're very grateful to our volunteer base. Uh, we, unlike a lot of children's theater companies, do really pride ourselves on the fact that we are not only uh, a theater for children, mm -hmm. but also primarily by yeah. children. You know, a lot of theater companies are adults okay. producing theaters for kids to go and see. And we really try to involve young people in every aspect of our production. They are on stage, they're backstage, they're running the lights, nice. they're running the sound. Yeah. Uh, but we are always, always looking for volunteers. Maybe I should have brought some kids in today then. <laughs> hey, maybe you can come back. Absolutely. Okay. They would love that. They're they're enjoying a rare day off right okay. now. We okay. open Pinocchio next week and they are all they're tired. <laughs> well, the nice thing about all the, the, the fact that we're doing with Youth for Youth mm -hmm. is there are some youth that don't want to be on stage. Stage. There's mm -hmm. some youth, that, but the the it, it's the it's not just the ultimate team sport. It uses every aspect of learning, mm -hmm. working backstage. There's so much problem solving that's going on. There's so much math and science that's happening when you are building and constructing the sets. There's so much math and science happening when you're working with the lights. There's so much math and science happening when you're when you're working sound, um, as well as it it crafts. It not only works the artistic side of the brain, it works the analytical side of the brain, yes. and then it generates all of this amazing empathy, not just through working with other people and having a problem solved, yeah. but through experiencing the piece of work. It really is a for a them to be able to say, "Look what look what I am a part mm -hmm. of." Yeah, and and to get yeah. to work with people that they might not ordinarily get a chance to be with That's cool. too. So now every there is a I know we can't talk about the money but there is a <laughs> fee to attend that do, do do you guys have any are there any opportunities for kids who couldn't pay for it to to attend some of the workshops or the camps um we do offer scholarships work? we okay. definitely offer scholarships and people can call our office and or get on our website to apply out. for those yeah. absolutely Cause i'm sure they're limited but um sure yes nice Okay, so being you've been with the youth theater for how long? Um, I uh, strangely, for as much as I love this organization and uh, as passionate as I am about it, I never, as a kid, was involved with the Fort Wayne Youth Theater. Oh, wow. I was very, very lucky, and I went to uh, a school that had a really, really strong oh. theater department, and so I was so deeply entrenched in that that I never had to look for another place. Ah to to go uh, and I directed my first youth theater show in 2000 okay. and that was the beginning of my involvement and then since then I, I've taught I've guest directed and now like I said I'm lucky enough to spend every day so you have day tons there. of stories then <laughs> so many okay, stories okay tell us um, um, tell us oh something Lord. that will that will that had really touched your heart or was really funny or that you wish you could just photocopy. Well, look, you should see Todd <laughs> staring at me right now, waiting for me to think of, of a great story. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure you have hundreds I'm sure you have another question you can ask while I try to think of a specific okay, well, maybe story. Okay, well, Todd this question then. Talk about the – I when you talked to me initially yesterday, yeah. I was really um, intrigued with the mask. The mask. Oh, um, yeah. Talk about that. Um, well, How does that? Uh, I, it, you know, forgive me if I get theoretical. So basically, mask. I'll, I'll ask you what uh, do you mean. Right. <laughs> so historically, mask performance, masks have always been used in performing. And if you think about when you're acting, you're wearing a mask. You are, you are putting something on and mm. letting it inhabit you. And so um, uh, there it came up. Uh, well, it's taken from this 15th century performance form called Commedia. But then in the 70s, they started, a lot of people started looking at mask and how you can wear a mask and use it for performance. Because the great thing about live theater is um, it, tra it can transform. 
And so when someone puts a mask on and they make it look like it's their face be, mm-hmm. by the way their body interacts with it, um, the way their 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 whole being in, m- m- interacts with the mask, that's magical. It's 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 transformative. There's a company named Mum and Shants. If people want to YouTube some great Mum and Shants performance work. Um, some of the work I've been doing in mask has been for theatrical reasons. So it's, um, you know, um, I have a kid's show that I did, ca- I, I do call Boxhead. And in it, um, I have this giant mountain come to life. And what it is, it's a giant, it's a 25 feet um, a piece of, of air conditioning duct. And it looks like this giant worm. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm in it manipulating it with my body. Um, and if you think again, like Julie Taymor to The Lion King, she's using mask to create these really epic uh, vibrant stage pictures. On the other hand, mask can be used as an acting tool and a performance tool. Um, so to make a mask live, like if it was an angry mask, to make that mask really work, you have to fill it with your body and have this aggressive mm. posture. And what that does, what that actually is doing to the brain is it's getting you to use different neural pathways in your brain. And it's getting you to access those different parts of your emotional um, uh, your emotional being, which would be awesome for kids. Do you do mm-hmm. productions, or do you do um, camps for kids surrounding that? I've been doing. I've been doing. It, it, the ironic part is the the same stuff that I will do with kids. I will do with adults. Mm-hmm. Um, it may be broken down smaller into smaller steps for youth, but it's all the same. It's all the same process that I'll do with youth and adults. So mm-hmm. absolutely, kids. They love it. Kids almost get it better than adults. They get the idea of the the transformative nature. They get the idea of I'm putting something on and playing. Again, with because it. they're inhibited. We are adults are like, oh, well, yeah. To, how to, am I to, look? To, to them, it's just like being at home and putting on their Superman costume <laughs> and suddenly becoming Superman. And I just have to say that uh, we are really, and, and I don't mean to kiss up to my new boss here, uh, <laughs> although I guess it doesn't really hurt, does it? Uh, and it's recorded, so I can play it for you anytime I want to. I already said you're the kid with her, man. <laughs> but I, I think we are so incredibly lucky at the Youth Theater to have Todd joining us because he brings a lot of these skills that none of the rest of us in this organization and that really not a lot of people in this community have. And so to be able to make that a part of our programming and to expose our kids to some of these things that he brings to the table that we do not, I just think is such a tremendous opportunity for us and for the kids that we serve. And we are very, very lucky, and I think Fort Wayne is going to find itself very, very lucky to have him here. I, I just want to diffuse that a little. I'm actually just a giant <laughs> man-child who is very fortunate that I get paid to go into a room and make yeah. stuff up. And so a lot like the mask stuff, I do I do circus. I was a variety performer with a circus show for many years. Oh, with my really? And all that stuff I just do because I like it. I, it, it inspires me as a per that cool little that little mm-hmm. person that I was. It yeah, inspired yeah, yeah. that little person, and so I just keep traveling down these pathways of finding interesting theatrical work to do. Yeah. So, and I feel very f- to to go back. I feel very very fortunate to work at the youth theater that I have this venue that's so open and successful and has such a rich history that we get to collaborate on this stuff together. I'm just bringing stuff in. It's it's the fact that the organization is so interested, the fact that Chris and I have had great conversations about wanting to uh, do other shows and throwing ideas out, you know. That's amazing. Um, so yeah. it, Looking it's, forward. it's a good, I think it's a good marriage of inspiration and, and, and uh, effort. Yeah. Cool. Come up with your story? No, I mean I got so involved in listening to Todd's, I forgot about mine. I, I actually got one. Okay, okay. there you go. Yeah, He's yeah, got sure. one. Uh, I, I, uh, and you're gonna think of one too, right? Oh, sure, oh, okay. sure. This this will be a touching one. My um, my uh, ex-wife and I founded a company called Starfish Circus, which goes into a school system or a theater, uh, and gets fifty to hundred kids K through high school, and teaches them circus techniques. So balancing stuff, tight wire walking. Um, if you've seen Cirque du Soleil, you see those pieces of fabric that hang down that people use like trapeze. It's yes. an aerial silk. And um, There was one at Ocala Civic Theater. There was one little boy when I came in um, and I, everybody kept saying, oh, he's on, you know, he's on the spectrum. He can be difficult. There, we need to have, you know, extra people there just to deal with him. And I said, no, no, let's, I, I mean, thank you, but let's just see how he, he behaves. And he definitely had his challenging moments, but he and I developed this sort of shorthand where I could tell where he needed to go and sit in the corner because the, the sensory input was too much for him. 
And I, I've seen him now. I saw him for four years in a row. And by the time we got to that fourth year, he had this just amazing focus and he had this amazing um, just ability to stay in the work and, and be self-controlled. And his parents came up after and said, you know, it, the, the patience that all of the coaches have taken with him and not uh, uh, sort of making him stand out because of, of his, his uh, auditory and physical uh, being on the spectrum, we just were patient with him and let him learn his own rate. And by letting him learn his own rate, um, he kept meeting our challenges. It was just wonderful to see him grow, and they really appreciated the fact that we pushed him, but were patient. That's nice. Um, he's a he's a lovely Beautiful. kid. Beautiful. He's a lovely, lovely kid. Yeah, and I, th- those are the kind of stories that come to mind for me too. Are really similar things that I have a student who's been in uh, my classes because uh, we do Saturday classes for those of you who are looking to sign up <laughs> for acting classes for your children. Henry classes in fall and in winter, spring. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there you go. And and I have one student in particular whose whose mother wrote me this really lovely letter at the end of last year because this kid came into my class two weeks ago practically hiding under the bench in the corner and at the end of the semester was able to get up in an auditorium full of 700 people and say his lines uh, with good. confidence <laughs> and and just what a huge difference theater made not just for him you know not just as a, a, an actor but as a human being and right. this is one of the things that Todd and I talked about last week it, the joy to me in what we do because I do I, I direct uh, other shows around town at other theaters with adults and and I love that as well and I, I derive a different kind of satisfaction out of that but when I direct a show full of adults I'm keenly aware that for them, for the most part, all I'm doing is affecting what they're doing with their life for the next couple of months. When you are working with kids like this, you are, and and I don't say this egotistically, but I also don't say it lightly, you are affecting who they are going to grow up That's to be. That's exactly right. That's beautiful. You are. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you never know what what direction they're going to go. Absolutely not. You know, we're not going to turn every kid into a Broadway star, but hopefully we are going to turn them into confident human beings. Right, right. Reminds me of a story, but I'm not going to tell this story now. (laughs) It's your show. You can do whatever (laughs) you want. Then I'll tell this story. All right. So, um, and I don't remember the name of it, and I hope I remember it all. Um, I was listening to Wayne Dyer. And he told a story about a little boy who um, was in a classroom, and this the teacher absolutely did not like interacting with this little boy. He was dirty. He was dingy. He was um, he struggled. He just had an awful. He was in her eyes an awful kid. But um, she began to read over. Um, his the history and the history of this child when he was the the teachers from first gr- kindergarten first grade second grade all talked about what a wonderful kid this was and how bright and and in tune he was then by the time he got to third grade his mother died mm. and they talked about how he struggled how his grades diminished how the father was not engaged And as she read over his history as a teacher, she felt awful because of how she felt about this Mm -hmm, little boy. mm -hmm. And um, so she began to change and not teach the class, but teach the child, touch into each child's life. And um, during Christmas season, this one particular year, all the kids brought gifts and this kid brought um, her gift wrapped in old newspaper and the kids laughed about it <laughs> and they the kid she stopped them and said wait a second everybody has something unique and she put on this bracelet that had um, rhinestones out of it had fallen out and a bottle of perfume that was half used and she sprayed the perfume on and just you know dawdled over this bracelet that she had on he stayed after school and told her, um, this makes me want to cry right now, <laughs> that you smell just like my mom. Oh, that, oh God. that was his mom's bracelet sure. and his mom's perfume. perfume. And she said after he left, she stayed there and cried for about an 
hour, she began to just pour into this child's life, pour into this child's life till he raised um, his grades. He became very one of the top students in the class and just excelled. So let's fast forward years later. She had not heard from him after graduation. And then he sent her a letter that he um, was getting married and his father had died and he wanted her to sit in the place of his mother. Um, And so she said, oh, okay, I would. But when the letter came to her, it was addressed by return address doctor, whoever this kid's name was. He ended up becoming a doctor and um, he when she went to the wedding, she he introduced her to his wife uh, and the family and talked about how this woman really changed his life. So what you're doing, you guys are changing lives. You really yeah. are. Yeah. You know, I, I, I again, I, I I hate to say, yeah, we are, because it, it makes you me really feel are. so egotistical to say it. No, but it doesn't, though. But in, yeah. in a good well, way, hopefully we are. Yeah. I, I see it as, as service. It yeah. really is a service of trying to bring out the best in other people. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a, a very good friend and teacher of mine, a gentleman named Kurt Toftlin, founded a program in Louisville, Kentucky mm-hmm. called Shakespeare Buying Bars. And uh, Shakespeare Pine Bars goes into um, a medium security prison, Luther Luckett Medium Security Prison, and produces a Shakespeare show a mm-hmm. year. And um, uh, I had a, we had the opportunity when I was working with Kurt one year to go in and meet some of these guys. And we were they, we saw one of their first public performances of one of their shows. And there was one gentleman who he only had he had a couple of small lines. He was a he was a messenger of some kind. And mm-hmm. afterwards, talking to him. He had the most profound stutter, but you didn't see it when he was on stage. <laughs> Another gentleman, we were we were sitting after the actors from the Shakespeare Festival and then the actors from the, the Luther Luckett prison. And somebody said to uh, a guy playing one of the leads, I said, so what's it like doing theater for you? And he said, well, I... Um, I've done a lot of bad things to people, really bad things to people. He said, I never thought about them. And he said, now I think about them all the time. Oh, wow. And it stuck with me. And then it, you know, just in terms of back that up, that particular prison, it's a medium security. So the guys are in programs that usually make them about 40%. Their recidivism rate is 40%. The recidivism rate of everybody who goes through Shakespeare behind bars is 6%. Wow. Yeah. And it's, th- and it's this idea of, of, taking an interest in the human being Mm -hmm. and and looking at it as rehabilitation for them as a human being, not just incarceration for them as a statistic. But I also think, like you said earlier, it goes back to the word empathy. Yeah. It helps teach them empathy and to think of other people. And and I think that's also such an important lesson that we teach our kids every day through the material that we're working on. Right. That's awesome. Well, guys, um, Anything else you'd like to share? Oh, I'm just enjoying this conversation. <laughs> well, keep a lookout for next season. Uh-huh. We've got four wonderful shows. We're going to be doing Treasure Island in October. Charlie Brown Christmas is coming back for December. Uh, you don't want to miss that. It's going to sell out. Our Her- Young Heroes of Conscience series, which we're incredibly proud of, is going to be after the miracle about the life of Helen Keller, after she learns to speak in the, the play Miracle Worker. And then finally, uh, Fairy Tale Fest is coming around next uh, again next year at this time with Rapunzel. Um, and we would love, I personally would love to see everybody in our classes and camps come on out, give us a call, and let's see if we can make some magic together. Fantastic. All right. Well, final thoughts, guys. Thank you so much for yes, having us. I mean, I like, yeah, this is something that, like I said, we are so passionate about and to have the opportunity to come here and talk about it and share it with more people in our community. We appreciate it so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You are listening to Speak Now, jamming with my jazz at 95.7 FM, WELT.